So make sure before you attempt to remove the brake drum that the parking brake lever is in the release position. Also, if the brake drum is uh, stuck, you're going to have to uh, adjust the star wheel from the backing plate. And also, if it seems to be maybe stuck to the hub or rusted on there from that point and you have adjusted it, um, you will probably need to use the screws at that point. Or in also a hammer. Big frame hammer, probably. And go in between the uh, studs. So I'll be removing the wheel cylinders on both sides. This is the driver's side, and I think the cup seals are defective, obviously. We have brake fluid just dripping out and contamination on the linings. Um, <clears throat> also, that will reduce hydraulic pressure uh, going to that side. So I'm currently on the passenger side right now, and I'm going to begin by removing the return springs. If you don't have a spring tool, such as shown right now, you can also use a pair of diagonal cutters. So most people have these wire cutters, diagonal cutters. Um, I'm going to begin by removing the upper return spring at the top there, closest to the wheel cylinder. And then I will begin by removing the uh, bottom spring down there. So they're not always easy to get off and obviously to put back on. So once you have, um, and then basically what I like to do though when I'm removing the top and the bottom springs, on the top one I like to remove the spring um, on the side where the uh, parking brake lever is. The side that actually has the adjuster lever, um, that piece there, I like to leave that one connected. So right now I'm going to be removing the hold down spring on, I believe, the side that has the uh, parking brake lever attached to the uh, shoe. So that's one side um, dismantled. And once you remove the second hold down spring on once again the, the side that has that uh, star wheel adjuster lever um, and return spring connected, then that will basically disassemble. It should disassemble as kind of one piece and I'll show you here in the video how it should be disassembling. You're also going to want to make sure to uh, inspect your hardware, meaning your springs and all of your hardware. So, um, and that's, I'm going to assemble it the same way as shown here on the video. So as you can see that adjuster right there for that star wheel and the spring, I'm going to uh, assemble it the same exact way. So what a lot of guys will do on this side where the parking brake lever is, is they'll actually disconnect it uh, from the top there and they'll go put it on a vise to get off that little like locking washer right there. So I normally uh, will do that, however, for the purposes of the video, um, it was gonna take more time, so I just decided to do it right there. So right here, I'm just using like a hose clamp tool. You could find these on Amazon or probably the parts store. Uh, they should sell them in a set. But what I'm doing is pinching off the uh, brake line to reduce the flow of brake fluid seeping out. So basically what happens is, um, a couple things happen when you have a leak in either the brake caliper, anywhere you have a leak actually in the system, in a braking system, you're not only uh, of course losing fluid, but you're actually um, inducing air and moisture into the system that way. So it's good to double check also the uh, reservoir at the master cylinder and make sure that it's at the fill, uh, full line. So check your uh, fill lines for the low and full level and make sure that it's topped off before you proceed to um, remove the brake line. So the first thing that I do is I start by actually, um, I loosen the brake line first. As you can see, it's actually already pulled off from the wheel cylinder itself. Um, the smaller image on that screen that actually shows the uh, backing plate, that's actually on the driver's side. and. Um, that was the only video I had that actually, that I, the footage that I got that showed that side. But however, I start removing the brake line first and then um, 
after I get that one loosened, I'll loosen the mounting bolt on the wheel cylinder. And then loosen both of those up. You're going to have, you know, fluid squeeze out, so have a drain pan ready. Now, if you want to do an inspection on your wheel cylinders, um, you're going to pull back the dust boot. Be careful not to rip or tear it as you do so. And now just do a visual inspection. So this one's bone dry. I, I, I didn't see any fluid leaking out on uh, the left or the right side. Therefore, most people wouldn't replace it. However, I am because the driver's side um, was leaking. So we're going to do both on this vehicle. And then once again, um, once you start on that brake line, uh, be careful when you're pulling and when you're working with brake lines, you don't want to bend them. And uh, be mindful not to, you know, strip, strip any of those uh, bolts or any of your hardware while you're doing this. So just once again, have a drain pan ready. And as long as you have the hose pinched off, um, you really shouldn't have anything leaking out, but uh, every vehicle is different. So I have it removed here on the passenger side. So what I'm going to begin uh, doing is on the backing plate, You have shoe uh, support pads and on the acre in uh, right there at the mounting holes. But basically those support pads, I'm just going to clean all the debris and I'm using a wire brush, some brake cleaner. And the goal is, is just to clean off all the, all, you know, all the debris and contamination. So here is the new wheel cylinder. So before I install that, I actually like to push in the, uh, with the push rods on the end there, I actually push those in, the pistons in themselves. And I'm actually starting first, so what you're going to do is put in, when you attach the brake line, make sure that you're putting enough pressure so that flange is actually seated up inside in that cylinder. And then I start screwing that in. I believe the torque spec for this is, I think it was 11 foot-pounds. So I start with the brake line and then the mounting bolt. And then once you get those tightened up, if you're able to uh, torque them, do so. So if you don't intend on torquing these down, just be mindful not to um, over tighten them so that therefore you don't strip anything and you don't have any problems. So once you have that completed, you could start by reassembling um, your shoes. So what some technicians will actually do is they'll take masking tape and they will tape over the uh, friction material, considering uh, drum brakes are you know much dirtier and a little bit messier than disc. So they will tape, uh, they'll put masking tape over the friction material and then they'll take that off after, you know, they've completed the install. Um, so this part, like I said, some people actually have this disconnected and do this on the vise, just I didn't for the video. I didn't feel like moving the camera was the whole reason behind it, but uh, you, if you don't feel like doing so and you don't have a vise, you can sit here and do it right here on the car as well it's not required for this job. So right now I'm uh, attaching the new brake shoe, uh, reattaching that onto the parking brake. So like I said, uh, some people will actually disconnect that. It'll probably make your life a little bit uh, easier if you have it disconnected. But if not, you could do so as I'm doing, shown here on the video. You can attach it as shown here. The most important part is on that horseshoe. You want to make sure that that gap is closed. So when you're reinstalling this, uh, just make sure that 
you know, you have that gap fully closed. Otherwise, you'll run into some more problems. So it will take you a little bit longer if you're doing it on the vehicle like this. If you're doing this off the vehicle, um, it probably cut the time, I'd say, in half. So once that's done, uh, you need to have some high temperature brake grease. And then you need to begin by lubricating your shoe support pads. So there should be three on each side. Sorry, I'm not showing the left side well. But the uh, right side, you'll have uh, three contact points, and those will be your shoe support. So each part that I'm going over, you want to also make sure before you do this, that it's clear of any uh, debris and dirt. So make sure that you scrubbed it well with a wire brush before you do this as well. Uh, you're, you'll need to do that with your uh, your adjuster as well. I'm not sure if I actually caught that on video or not. So right now I'm getting ready to transfer the uh, parking prawl adjuster onto the second uh, brake shoe there. So and I usually find this method uh, a little bit simpler for the install and it usually cuts down on some time. But on that uh, paw on the spring seat, as long as you, uh, right there I'm working on getting that, that spring back in, but on the other one, that parking paw, as long as you have them all installed like that, uh, therefore you should just have to attach the hold down spring and therefore attach that one return spring in the assembly portion will be completed. So once that's attached, you'll have your one hold down spring. And like I said, if any of these coils of these springs, if there's any spaces, you need to replace your hardware. Or you could drop them on the ground and listen for a thud noise. If they don't make a thud noise, I would replace them. So you have to work that paw. Basically, sometimes that gets stuck for me. Um, this spring actually is what gets stuck on it. Therefore, I, I usually have a little bit of trouble getting it lined up um, on the parking brake lever itself. So just work with it and uh, It'll take some time, but you'll get it eventually. So right now I'm working on lining it up and getting in that second hold down spring. So I'm just trying to line up that pin. Like I said, I anytime I do uh, drum brakes, I think it's uh, wise to replace the springs and the hardware. Not in, and not every kit will have it included, so it's something separate that uh, you you may have to sell to the customer, you know, or the customer you, you know you need to have them buy it. But So I believe I have one, uh, the both hold down springs. So now I think I have uh, two return springs to attach. Now that top one, like I said, I normally have to sit there and work with that and line up the paw. And then sometimes I'll have to um, try to hold the spring at the same time. If you have that spring tool, that typically works well. Um, However, if not, just use a pair of diagonal cutters. 
So there I am installing that bottom return spring. And uh, like I said, one way to minimize any dirt or contamination on the brake linings is just by placing that masking tape. And that, you know, once you had them, you know, if you had the masking tape on at this point, then you could begin to remove it because I don't think you'd be touching the linings too much at this point. So that's installed. And then I think the last spring is... Uh, this is the tough one. Like I said, if you have this tool, um, in a sense, it does a lot of the work for you. However, there are, you know, sometimes where I still have to grab a pair of pliers and I still have to guide it in at the same time into the hole. So sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't for me. Honestly, um, there's sometimes where I, I use it and I just turn around and I get a pair of diagonal cutters because I'm not able to either get a good reach or what have you. Uh, the most important part, too, um, I forgot to mention, when you're doing the reinstall on that paw, make sure that adjuster is all the way in. So, meaning you want it at the lowest setting, um, you know, where the shoe brakes would be in the return position. You don't want them squeezed out, like going towards the drum. Because uh, once you do your adjustment, you want that, since these are new shoes and the drum will be new, um, I want it at the lowest setting and therefore I'm going to do my adjustment. It'll be a little bit easier for me to work the shoes outward than have them go back in. So as you can see, I grabbed a pair of diagonal cutters. And it's just a pretty mega fight sometimes with this. Like I said, that little paw right there, they always pop out. So I'm always, um, con I'm constantly fighting these. If you're actually strong enough, you could actually, um, on some designs, depending on the brake design, um, I'll actually, that adjuster up, up at the top, I'll actually have both of the springs connected. And then if you're strong enough, you could just squeeze it out. And uh, it's easy, It's so much easier to actually put them on the uh, wheel cylinder as a whole piece instead of the way that I'm doing it. Okay, so I'm finishing up uh, getting that spring in there, and then uh, once I have that attached, everything should be done. So I'm going to make sure that these are sitting uh, in those anchors where they need to be, and then uh, I'm going to probably spray them off again with a brake cleaner. And then at this point, I still have that hose clamp for the brake hose attached, so um, I'll be removing that as well. So I give them one last spray down before I begin uh, doing the adjustment. I'm going to take off the hose clamp right now. So at this point, this will be um, where we uh, reset the drum shoes to the brake drum. So there's two methods you could use. You could use this brake drum resetting gauge, 
as shown here this is a gear wrench part number 3377 I believe I bought this from Amazon.com or you can do it by hand and listen and feel for the drag if you're using this tool you're going to take your first reading from the inside of the drum so I like to go down at the lowest point and make sure that it's even on both the left and right side you don't want to have an out of round reading but you're going to take your uh, your reading I usually do it from right around the middle lock it and then once you have that reading you're going to apply that to the brake shoes so at this point you're going to be adjusting them inward or outward once that has uh, been completed then you can go ahead and attach the drum so from here I'm gonna listen for um, a drag noise and I'm basically feeling and, and listening right now so you want to you want to hear that drag that's very important okay so once you feel confident that you have adjusted uh, the brake shoes correctly to the drum and you do uh, hear that drag noise then from here I'm going to be attaching on the lug nuts and begin for the bleeding procedure so what I prefer to do is I'll um, attach a couple lug nuts um, to the rotor because uh, I will have someone in the car um, if you're using a hydraulic machine you may not need to do this but however I'm going to have someone in the passenger or in the driver's seat depressing the uh, brake pedal you can proceed to the last step and like I said I make sure to have those lug nuts uh, onto the, the drum so um, with the bleeding procedure um, what I'll be doing is I'm going to start on the right rear tire that's going to be furthest away from the master cylinder and then after um, after I see clean fluid with no air bubbles coming out from that side I'll proceed to the left rear and then I'll, I'll bleed out that side and then I'll follow up with the right front and then left front so before you begin uh, begin this process make sure that the master cylinder is full make sure that you have brake fluid um, enough brake fluid ready to be added as you're doing this so normally after each time I um, usually after about three to four times of bleeding on each side I will stop what I'm doing and I'll double check the level at that master cylinder to make sure I have not gone below the uh, the low line so that will be basically this is one of the last steps before you start mounting on your tires I just make sure that you bleed them double check the master cylinder as you're doing this because you do not want that to run low and just be uh, be mindful that you get um, all the air bubbles out otherwise uh, this fluid will not compress okay so once you've completed the uh, bleeding procedure you can then uh, put your tires back on and start torquing them down if you have any more noise associated with the drum brakes uh, you will need to listen for adjustments maybe bleeding and or hardware after that so I hope this video helps you guys and thanks for watching